Hi, this is Matt Welch for Recent TV. I'm at Freedom Fest in Las Vegas, and I'm here with Fox News uh, commentator Juan Williams, who was just talking about school choice reform. Tell us a little bit how you first came into the school choice movements or, or ideas and why. When did the light bulb go off? You know, the light bulb went off for me in the 90s when I started to understand the crisis, especially in big city public schools the high dropout rate, especially for vulnerable populations, and you know that sounds so amorphous, let me just be, put some meat on the bones for you. I'm talking about poor children, I'm talking especially about immigrant kids and minority kids. And these are kids who in some way embody the spirit of belief in America. You'd be surprised how patriotic, and they watch a lot of TV because oftentimes they, you know, they're at home a lot, they don't have money. They want to succeed. They want to be somebody. And they, you know what? The schools aren't meeting their needs. The, 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 the schools treat them like they are throwaway children, like they're to be discarded. And the teachers, they'll talk about, you know what? This kid really can't succeed. And then, you know who picked up on this and really caught my imagination was President Bush when he talked about the bigotry of low expectations. Soft bigotry, that's right. Yeah. Yes. The, I mean, now you think about that. Now, there's a president that a lot of people say, well, he's a conservative. And say, wait a second. Here he is expressing a deep, heartfelt, compassionate concern about America's children of all color, but particularly those who are locked into failing schools. And what was the reaction from the school unions and the school community? Oh, no, no problem here. Why are you bothering us? I mean, it's just an outrage. It is the outrage of our time. And that's why I think it's the civil rights issue of our time to assure that parents and children have some choice that allows them to get a quality education. Now, we're in a moment where there's a lot of documentaries that have come out. It feels like there's a lot of momentum on the side of school reform, yet it's not quite happening. Who needs to be reached in this debate that isn't being reached or isn't being engaged so far? Well, I think one thing that always amazes me is that so many of the parents of these children who are locked into these failing schools are not in the streets. I just don't understand it at times. And what I've been told by superintendents that I've asked about it is, you know what, they feel they don't have a choice, and therefore they're going to not want to say to their child, you know what, my daughter, my daughter, my son, you go to a bad school and there's just not much hope what's going to happen to you coming out of that school. So they don't say anything, they don't raise their voices. If we could get them to raise their voices, and how do you get them to raise their voices? These are people who say they don't have a choice, they don't want to speak badly of a school that their child has to attend. The answer is give them a choice. Give them a choice that would allow them to say, I'm going to decide where my child goes, and if that school's not working for my child, I have a choice to move on. That's the answer. And I just, it's to me glaring, it's obvious, and it's compelling, and that's why I'm speaking about it. Uh, you used to work at NPR, now you work at Fox News. You have fans on both sort of sides. Uh, which has been more receptive to school choice ideas in your experience? Oh, without a doubt, the right's more receptive to school choice because, you know, a lot of this then becomes political. And, I, you know, this is the part of it that can become problematic for someone like me whose job is to analyze politics. I'm not here to say one side's right or one side's wrong in terms of the politics, but it's clear that the unions put money into Democrats who then support the existing, the status quo, when it comes to failing schools. And Republicans are saying, wait a second, why is it that Democratic politicians are fed by unions who benefit from public taxpayer dollars? So there is a connection here, and there's corruption in this whole system, in my opinion. But Republicans are the ones who, because they are negatively affected by it, are jumping up and screaming bloody murder. Last question, what do you see happening in the next five years? Are you optimistic? Where is it going to break? What's happening? Oh, I, I'm, I'm optimistic. And I, you know what? I believe that if you have an honest discussion of this, it's just so overwhelming. I mean, you just look at the numbers. You look right now, there's that scandal in Atlanta and elsewhere over test scores being faked. You look at the dropout rate in this country, how many children are not getting out of high school at a time of global economic competition, competition for jobs, 9% unemployment. How can you say to so many young people, you don't need a high school education, we're not going to give you the opportunity to make, a something, to make something of yourself in America? I think it's a condemnation of America, and I think that it's contrary to the American spirit. So no, I, I tend to be very optimistic that this is a breakout issue, that we're on the verge of what I called or described to you earlier as this, the civil rights issue, the political issue of the 21st century. Thank you very much. With Juan Williams, I'm Matt Welch for Reason TV.